What's up everybody, JJ here, and today I'm gonna to show you all of the steps involved with getting mesh bed leveling working on your 3D printer. I'm gonna be using a BL Touch style probe to probe the bed, and I'm gonna cover everything, the hardware, how to install it, how to rig it up and wire it correctly, the firmware, how you get it actually talking to your printer, and then configuration at the end, there's a lot of calibration and configuration you need to do to get it running as smoothly as you need. Today I am gonna be using the Anycubic Mega S as my printer, and it is running Clipper firmware. But if you're interested in mesh bed leveling, a lot of these things will work on other printers or on other firmwares. There's a lot to cover here, so I bet anyone will learn something from this video. I did wanna mention that this is a 3D Touch, not an official BL Touch. This is a clone of a BL Touch. I got this one off eBay for about $13. And you should know the potential downsides of getting a clone versus an official one. It could be inaccurate, it could not last for a long time, or it could not work at all out of the box. But I just kind of wanted to try it out, so I just went with the cheap one. This is also proof that this channel is not sponsored, that I bought the cheap one off eBay, and so my opinions are gonna be genuine with this one. This channel is just funded by myself, so if you do find this video useful, hitting that like button below really helps me out and helps me keep continue creating videos like this. Enough of that, let's get on to the installation. First off, the hardware. You're gonna need a way to mount the sensor onto your printer. There's so many options out there to just print for most printers. I would recommend searching Thingiverse or wherever you find your 3D models online. Type in the name of your printer and BL Touch mount, and there's probably so many different mounts for whatever hot-end setup you're using. I'll link a couple popular ones down below. The next issue to tackle is wiring, and this is what gave me the biggest issues. For a couple weeks, I had it mounted on there, but I couldn't get it to turn on. I thought my probe was just a dud, but then I realized I'm colorblind. Sometimes I forget just how red-green colorblind I am. On here, there's three main wires that go to your main board, there's brown, red, and yellow. And those brown and red wires look opposite of what they should be. It took me about two weeks and then I asked my wife what they were and she said I had them backwards. So that's why it wasn't turning on. And so you'll probably need to reverse the plugs here. They need to be in red, brown, then yellow. And then they plug right onto the main board of the Anycubic Mega S. The Tri-Gorilla has headers ready for this one you just plug it right in. I'll link the PDF down below that covers a lot of the wiring for this one. With the probe I got, it did come with a one meter cable, but since I have all these cable chains, I did have to extend the cables a little bit, which is pretty easy. Just cut them in the middle, add some wire extensions. Fairly simple if you're used to a little bit of soldering. And the soldering, since I already had it out, I used it for the next step. The next two wires you have, there's a black and white wire. Those are your signal and ground for when the switch should be closed. And with the Anycubic Mega S, there is a PCB on the hot end. In this picture, and that's also what I did, I wired on a jumper headers. You might have some of these just laying around, or you can just solder it directly and not put the header in there. The header makes it easier for you to take it off later if the need ever arises. To avoid soldering, there is a way to remove these plugs from this housing and put them into the wire harness that's going to your printer. I'll link another video down below where someone used that process. It was a really great way to do it. If you don't have a soldering iron, if you don't know how to solder and don't wanna learn, just use that. But if you're okay with soldering, this one's a fairly simple solder job. And that's basically all you need for hardware. Just plugging it in and there's five wires you need to connect to your printer. The hardest part is making it look good. It did take a while to get these wires slung through all the cable chains and down into the printer and making it look fairly good. But once it's done, it's always done, and you don't have to worry about it again. It might be worth taking 30 minutes or so to really make sure it looks good. And now that your hardware is in place, we can move to the firmware side of things. Since I am using Clipper, I'm gonna be showing you the config files I am using. They are my GitHub with the config files are linked down below. I'll also link to some Marlin firmware for this printer if anyone is still using Marlin and wants to get BL Touch working on that. The big difference there is with Marlin to change your firmware, you need to recompile the entire firmware and then load it onto your machine. Whereas with Clipper, it's just a config file on your Raspberry Pi, super easy to add. So here we are in Clipper. You can go to your configuration, printer.config, edit that. Here's the three sections you're gonna need to add. These are with all the features that I've added to it, and I'm gonna go through those. Your BL Touch configuration, you do need a sensor pin and your control pin. Those are already wired up. The X, Y, and Z offset, I'm gonna cover those in a second. We're gonna to need to manually calibrate those. These two stow on each sample and probe with touch mode. That way when it's probing the bed, it doesn't pull the probe all the way back up into there. It'll make sense later, it just makes probing a little bit faster. And I've done the test and it's just as accurate, if not more accurate, 
to not pull the pin up between tests. Your safe Z home, this is where you want it to do the Z homing. I did it about in the middle of the bed. Speed is just whatever speed it takes to get there. Z hop, Z speed, I just left it 10. Bed mesh, these are some settings later for how you want it to actually mesh the bed. And there's a bunch of different configuration options you can use, whether you turn them on or off. These are just what I've decided on, but for different people, for sure I would recommend configuring it whatever works best for you. Another important thing to do now is adjust your Z extruder minimum height. So since it always sets 000 at where it starts printing, once you've meshed your bed, if one part is lower than where it starts printing, so it's gonna need to travel to negative Z offset. So here on my position minimum on my stepper Z, I made it negative five. That basically means it can go a little bit below. It's not really gonna go to negative five. You could use negative one or two, depending on after you've meshed your bed. That's something that helps avoid some errors you might get later on. Now that you've done that, hit save and restart, and your probe should be ready to go. The light should be red on there, and when you turn power onto it, it should probe up and down a couple times. That's just it calibrating, making sure it's all working correctly. But the Clipper website does have some steps we should go through on the first install, just in case. So here we are at the printer, ready to start going through calibration. First thing you need to go through is the initial tests section on the Clipper website. And they've got all the commands listed on the website, but I'm gonna run through them now. So BL touch debug command pin down. Your pin should drop down and the light turns off. Next you run pin up. The pin pulls back up and the red light turns back on. Now we're testing to make sure the little sensor in there is correctly triggering. Next you run query probe and probe open is what it should be right now since it's extended and not currently touching anything. Next, get it ready to run, and then with your tip of your finger, push the probe up just a little bit. Enough until the red light turns on, but not enough that it fully pops back up. Then run query probe, and you should get the triggered output. Next, you can release, and the light will turn back off. After that test is complete, you can just run command pin up. It is nice in the fluid firmware on the terminal to rerun a command you've recently run, you can just hit the up arrow button on your keyboard and that will cycle through previously submitted commands. Now that we know that the sensor is correctly working and correctly triggering, we can try a full Z probe. This is one where you will need to keep your hand on the power button of your printer. Mine is back here in the back. The command is G28 and it's gonna test your Z axis. And so it's gonna come down and try to touch the bed. So this is when you wanna keep your hand on the off button of if it doesn't correctly trigger, it will try to just smash into your bed, so be careful on the first time you do this. It first goes, a regular G28 measures your X, Y, and then we'll try your Z axis. There we go. There we go. So it goes through and does it twice, once quicker, and then once more accurate. Same way it does with the X and Y axis. So now you know your probe is working correctly and it's not gonna damage your bed by just crashing into it, and we can move on to the calibration. So the first things we need to calibrate are the X, Y, and Z offset. So the mount you printed might have come with an X and Y offset. I used those as a starting point, but I did need to fine tune it after that. So get yourself some tape and something to write with. Tear off a little piece of tape Issue the probe command. That will probe your Z axis where it's calibrated to run. Get your piece of tape, put it under, under where the probe is right now, and put a little bitty X. So after that mark is made under the probe, we're gonna need to move your nozzle directly over that. So I would issue G91, that takes it into relative positioning, and then a simple G1 command X. Make sure you view it really straight on to get your x-axis and then view it straight on from the side to get your y-axis calibrated in. And if you go the wrong direction, just reverse it. And now you just total up your numbers here. So the x would be 30 and my y column would be negative 17. So enter those numbers as your xy offset in your config file. You can go through and make these as accurate as you want but a little bit of offset isn't gonna be the end of the world. The z-axis we're about to calibrate, that's where we do need to be very precise. So with this, you will need a sheet of paper. We're gonna be using the paper test to calibrate your offset, but different than normally running this test, you only need to run it once and then you'll be set forever. And the automated commands here makes it really easy to run. So first you should home your x, y, and z axes. Now we can again say probe calibrate. And after it does the X, Y, and Z calibration, it moves the nozzle to where the probe was. And that's where we're gonna start 
the paper test. So the command you can enter is test z, z minus, and then whatever number you want. So initially, I'm going to start with pretty big moves because there's a big gap there. So start with like three millimeters. Do that much again. Now it's getting in close. So get your paper in there. You can feel it touching. Start with 0.1. And there we go. You can, I can start feeling it. So with this, you should just step through until you get good pressure on your paper or however you like to calibrate your paper test. I like to do it until I get a little bit of friction, but not too much. Another nice command there is here, test z, z equals with just a minus or a positive. That bisects your last two test points, and those commands really help with that final fine-tuning of the calibration. But after you do this and you run your first print, if it's too far or too tight, then you can just come back in here. It's really easy to come back and adjust these offset. But after you've got it precisely dialed in, you can run the accept command, and that saves it into your config file. And that's all it is. Your printer should be calibrated and ready to go. You can home all of your axes and get ready for your first calibration. So with fluid over on the left side, there's the tune, and this, this is my current bed mesh. It's not great, but that's the point of mesh bed leveling is that it solves for any of your inconsistencies you have. Here, I'll clear out the profile. So we've got no meshes loaded. After you've honed the X, Y, and Z, you just hit calibrate and it runs through and starts probing all your points. I do have a pretty dense mesh probe here since I don't have to probe very often. I don't probe before every print. I've actually hard mounted the bed here, which is something I would highly recommend you do. After you've got it working, it's a really cheap and easy upgrade that helps you keep your mesh for longer. I simply went to the hardware store and picked up some of these nuts. These are just quarter 20 nuts. They don't actually thread onto the screw. They're just sitting around there and pressing on the bed. This was maybe $1.50 for 10 of these and I only ended up using eight of them. But now the bed won't lose calibration if you bump it. Since there's not just a spring it's bouncing off of, you can touch this and you're really not gonna throw it off of calibration. And here is our mesh. It looks the same as the last time I've run it. That's another thing I would recommend. If you run the mesh, the first time especially, I would recommend running it again and make sure the meshes look similar. If they look fairly different, you might need to rerun some calibration or make sure everything is fully tightened down on everything. But if it looks close to the same of your last one, you can hit save as. I would just save it as the default and then it will restart Clipper. And now you should be ready for some nice level printing. I think that wraps it up. That covers just about everything you need to get your mesh bed level working perfectly. You should be having some perfectly smooth first layer prints. And for anyone who's on the fence, been thinking about it for a while, I would recommend trying it out. It really wasn't that hard to set up. Just knowing that first layer is gonna be smooth and even every time is such a huge benefit. If you're having any issues with getting your setup, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out on that. Or if you have any other thoughts on mesh bed leveling or your installation process that I didn't mention here, also be sure to put that down below. Those comments can really help other people out. But that about wraps it up for this video. Go out there, print something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.